Hello everybody, welcome back to this new video on Better Way. I'm Barrett, how's it going? Today we're viewing the Nasdaq. Will it drop or will it continue to new highs? Keep watching to find out. out. So let's see, this is the bigger picture on the Nasdaq. What I mark up is a wave one and two with a low on September 21st. Now what that means is that we should be within an intermediate three, a blue three, which will eventually bring us to all time highs, you know, every every day, every week. So do I think it's going to drop? Do I think it's going to continue high? Well, as for now, there's no reason to think the market will crash. Um, the sentiment is good. We know that even though it sounds weird, the the best bull market occur in a period of pessimism. You may not believe that, but it's true. So what, what am I going to do? Am I going to buy this market? Do I have any position on this market? Am I going to sell it, short it? Well, if we, if we zoom in on the one hour, we're going to see that potentially we have wave one, two in red, and three, which might have been completed with the top on September the 16th. Now, does, does that mean that we should buy now? Am I going to buy now? Well, absolutely not. What I'm going to do is let's zoom in and see what, what I'm seeing. So I'm seeing five wave down one, two, three, four, five. So that means that it could be an A wave. And then we saw a reaction higher, meaning that it could be either complete or not the B wave. Now, we all know that ABC is a correction we want to enter with the trend. So after an ABC. Now, if we wait until th this wave C present itself to us, we'll be, I'll be happy to enter. Now, now, that's a good question, Barrett. They ask me a lot, how do I know when the, the correction is over? When do I enter? Well, the answer is quite easy. So we want to wait. We don't want to enter right now. I mean, you could, but I, I wouldn't enter right now because it's quite dangerous. So if and only if I see five waves down from here, or as I said, we, we could make, you know, we can make something like this up, down, up, or it could get quite, quite sideways. It could be a triangle since it's, it's a wave B. Doesn't matter as long as I'll see five waves down. I'm going to buy now to know where I want to buy. I usually go on the fixed extension tool. I measure the length of wave A. And then I want to compare. The, I want to see where wave C will end. So I just click it on the end of wave B. So this one means that we're going to have equality of wave A and C in length right here as long as this wave B doesn't continue higher. So I want to I want to I like to enter somewhere around the one and the 1.618. So around this area could be a quite interesting entry. We have additional confluence, the trend line which acted as support in the past. And perhaps we're going to see uh, the Nasdaq moving reacting around this area. So that's confluence number one. Confluence number two is our extension. So the length of wave C compared to wave A. And then number three is that we know that it is a tendency for wave four to end to terminate near the wave four of one last degree. So we have this red four, the wave four of one last degree would be this one. And if you if you pay attention, the wave four of one less degree of this one is that one. So you see how they do end very close to each other. So that's confluence number three. Now, well, I, I do have other confluences and that is the dollar. I like to keep track of the dollar. So let's go watch what's happening in the dollar index, the DXY. Okay, here we are. This is the dollar index DXY. 
Now, what what I, what are we seeing? What are we seeing? We're seeing a possible wave four, which completed right here on the February fifth. And if you pay attention, you may see five waves down: one, two, three, four, five, to have a low on September sixteenth. Now we know that if we are expecting a wave five, a red five, we're going to have five sub waves of one less degree within that wave. What that means is that if we zoom out, zoom in on the one hour chart, we're going to see this five waves. So that could be our one, two, three, four, and five. So as you can see, as as for today, uh, it's uh, February nineteenth, London session. We are turning lower. So if we break this, and you know we have additional confluence uh, confirmation once we break this low on January sixth, we can then assume we are going lower. So why why am I saying this? Well. Usually when the dollar trades lower, the indices will tend to trade higher. Now it doesn't mean that every time dollar index trades lower, the indices are going to trade higher. But in this scenario, we've seen that for the past months, when the dollar index has been trading lower, the indices have continued higher to the upside. Okay, so with that being said, we have our account on the NASDAQ. We have our additional confluence to predict where that wave four is going to end. And we have the dollar index on our side. Now, does that mean that we're going to see the NASDAQ continue higher 100%? No, unfortunately, trading is not 100%. But what that means is that I have enough confidence, I have enough proofs, enough evidence that I am confident to take that trade. Now, we can lose, we can win, doesn't matter. I'm following my plan. As long as I'm following my plan, I am applying risk management to my trades. I'm going to be fine. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Leave a like. Um, so thanks for watching. I appreciate you. Uh, thanks for watching. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think about what, what might happen. Smash your like back. Mm. So thanks for watching. Oh. Um. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think might happen next. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. It really helps. And I'll see you on the next one.